Hello and welcome to Pursuit a Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis, I'm an audio reviewer and this is my video coverage for the Munich High End Show 2019. I'd like to thank my show coverage sponsors. Melco, GIK Acoustics, Telerium Q. I have created lots of videos as part of a coverage for the high end show and you'll find other videos like this in my channel. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, hit that like button, make sure you've subscribed to the channel and I'll be seeing you all soon. I run the uh, Melco project basically outside of Japan. Uh, we've got some very important uh, news today and the uh, great pleasure that I have is to introduce Simon Nash from Minim Server and Paul Taylor, ah, Paul Taylor does exist, Paul Taylor from, from Songkong. These are two very special softwares uh, which we'll explain um, in a few moments uh, what, what, what it's all about. Uh, Melco solved many problems when it was introduced into the market, but one problem that I'll be quite honest and truthful that we couldn't solve really uh, was the last remaining problem uh, for digital music, which is um, finding the music that you want to play on your collection. If you have a couple of hundred uh, CDs ripped into uh, a Melco, you don't have a problem. You have a couple of thousand, you've got a bit of a problem. If you've got 5,000 CDs, you've got a big problem. Um, and we need to find a solution. Um, and today is all about explaining how that solution works. The basic problem is that the metadata, which is the stuff that you see on the browsing tablet when you're trying to search for, for music, is uh, produced by um, metadata tags. Uh, these hark back to the days of MP3. MP3 is a very old standard. It was done at a track level, so MP3 basically doesn't understand what an album is. So an album is a set of MP3 tracks, and therefore from that starting point, the metadata is always going to be a problem. Um, the metadata was also very basic because it was done for pop music, really. It was just for very simple applications. You just want to know what the artist was, uh, what the album uh, was that it came from, uh, you know, the song, and you know, possibly the genre, although you never believe the genre because the genre was always used for marketing purposes by the record companies anyway. So you know, that was meaningless. So basically we have just three uh, clues to find, help you find the music. The metadata libraries um, are all incomplete. We use um, Gracenote, which is the same library as iTunes use, a very fine library. However, there are many others. All of them have defects to some extent, and most of the defect originates from the fact that the metadata is provided to these companies by the record companies, and the record companies don't really understand. It's the marketing department of the record companies, they don't really understand what the music's all about. So rock and pop, you're in with a chance. Jazz, probably not. Classical, forget it. Um, and we've all got customers who get frustrated as a result. Um, the libraries are, are not only incomplete, but they're also inconsistent. So the data that you would get from Grace Note is different to the data you get from AMG. It's different from the data you get from some of the other databases. Uh, so we choose by default today just one database. So I'm telling you now we're giving you inconsistent and incorrect metadata with your uh, Melco rips. Um, it's not really our fault, but so far there's nothing much we could do about it. The other thing is that when you're browsing, you're using a tablet or something, or on a Melco even if you use the front panel, you're actually interacting with a, a, a very clever piece of software called the UPMP server. The UPMP server is really the, the browsing bridge between your music collection um, and, and your own wishes. The problem for the UPMP server is actually they're all a bit different. They work in different ways, so the performance and behavior of the UPMP server isn't consistent. But the, uh, you know, there's a lot of variation. So how can we fix these problems? Well, there are two basic areas of the problem uh, that I've outlined. Um, one is uh, the metadata, the other is the UPMP server. So we can manually edit metadata. Um, some of our expert and geeky customers do it all the time. Um, I wonder if they've got a life because it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of hard work. 
um, and um, you, if, if, if you're editing metadata, you've got to understand that file names are not metadata. So a lot of customers waste a lot of time changing file names, get absolutely nowhere. Um, so we can edit metadata using uh, various software tools, but in order to do that, you have to have a very clear idea in your head of what it is that you're trying to achieve. How do you want to rearrange your digital music library in, in, in the machine? Um, if you've got clear rules and wish to apply these things, um, then, to be quite honest, this is something that we can apply automation and data processing to. Um, so that will allow for the application of consistent rules to the building of the metadata. So the solution to that uh, part of the problem is software called Songkong. Anybody who's uh, known Melco for a few years knows that we've supported Songkong for a long time. Um, this is a very powerful uh, software uh, metadata engine that makes multiple lookups from various sites, um, uses clever algorithms to actually assess what the album or the track or whatever it is really is, um, and embeds that as proper metadata. It's very deep, it's very detailed because it's getting data from uh, many, many data sites. Um, because the algorithms are applied not by some third party but actually by Songkong, the metadata is now consistent. So the rules apply to every uh, album or track in, in the collection. Um, I'll uh, qualify that by saying that we actually treat classical music and non-classical music slightly separately, uh, slightly differently for obvious reasons. Um, and we can deal with things like um, a typical classical situation where you've got multiple pieces of music, multiple works on one album. Um, I know Simon doesn't like me referring to these as compilations, um, but you know it's one album with two or three interesting things on there. You're only wanting to search for one thing, you don't want to search for the album. Um, we've got um, multiple track artists, very common with, with jazz, uh, lots of stars attributed to an individual track multiple work artists, subgenres, it all gets very complicated and Songkong consistently applies rules to fix it. So going back to the UPMP server, which if you remember is the interface between this metadata that Songkong has and the user, there are variables and problems to be dealt with here. The first thing is that actually the UPMP server has no idea what the original data is supposed to be. It doesn't understand uh, whether, whether it's classical, whether it's incomplete, it, it, all it can do is make the best of a bad job. So the data that's there, the UPMP server has to interpret as best possible. Um, but it's working in an unknown environment. It doesn't know what control point you're using. Um, now, of course, in the case of Melco, you know, we, we try and fix these things to some extent. Um, but the one thing that we, we can't adjust for is the user. I don't know, or the Melco doesn't know, whether the user's trying to search for classical music, jazz music, or rock and pop. Um, and we don't know really what's in the customer's mind when he's going through the browse tree, getting increasingly frustrated trying to find stuff. Um, so you know, we don't know what the user preference is. So the, the solution now for this is to use uh, Minim Server. Again, Minim Server is software that's been around for many years, highly respected. We've long recommended people to install Minim Server in, into Melcos. Um, a good number of Melco users actually do have Minim Server integrated at the moment, um, but it's a manual installation and um, it, it works fine, but I will confess now it is not perfect. And I'm going to ask our two, sorry. The experience is not perfect. Minim server is totally perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, the, the, the clever thing uh, really is that we take advantage of Minim server intelligent browsing because Minim server is a lot smarter than um, other UPnP servers. If we link the two things together um, in, inside the Melco, we get um, a, a total system which involves Minim Server, which you can see in the middle, um, dealing with all the clever metadata that Songkong has carefully produced, um, controlled by any possible means that you wish to control it. We've got web control, even from panel control from the Melco, 
Um, and it works for network players and it works for the local USB player as well. So th that's the introduction, if you like. Uh, Okay, so uh, the development of SongCon goes back a few years and the concept was that we wanted the date, your metadata, your music library to be consistent. And the other important thing is we felt that it could be done automatically. Um, we, wanted to, we wanted to fix the metadata so the metadata was fixed in the files itself so your music library wasn't tied to any particular system such as iTunes, it was, it was individual and could be transported from one place to another without losing any of that valuable metadata. We wanted the metadata to be detailed and comprehensive because people want to browse their music by things rather than, other than, as Alan was saying, other than just by album or artist, by works or by things like BPM for a DJ or um, particular record labels, so we wanted that comprehensive metadata that wasn't previously available. But we wanted it to be easy to use because people are very busy, so we wanted it to just be a simple thing that people could run and trust. And because music collections are very personal and important, we make a very detailed record of exactly what's been changed, so the customer can have complete trust about what has been modified. And we also provide a way to make the change to undo the changes at a later date. So if there's anything they don't like, they can just go back to how things were at a, any particular level. So we now have SongCon running on the Melco itself, and basically here we can see that um, I won't go into too much detail, but it can identify the audio files in a couple of different ways. One by something called audio fingerprinting, whereby it actually listens to the music and can identify the song based on the, the, the actual audio. But we also look at existing metadata and folder structure and various mechanisms to make sure we're not just identifying the correct song, but we're also identifying the correct song on the correct album. Because most songs are available on multiple albums these days, so the important thing is we're actually matching to the album and the songs within that album. Having done that, we can add metadata. We use a number of sources such as the Music Brains database, Discogs, Acoustic Brains, Cover Art Archive, and all that data is applied consistently. So that includes not just textual metadata, but also album and artist artwork. Having done that, we can create a report, we can export the data as a spreadsheet, the data is in the files themselves, so then it's available for Minim Server. And we can control SongCon from the Melco or from a web browser, and that web browser can be running on anything. So you don't have to have a separate computer, you can, be, you can control SongCon from your phone or tablet or any, any device that has a web browser. Um, so Minim, one of the great things about Minim Server, it makes it possible to browse by any metadata. And SongCon provides a way to get that metadata available to Minim Server. Um, one key thing we really do is with artists. So where, others, where some other solutions might just look up data for a particular album and they are, the, artist, the, the artist might be, say, Tchaikovsky, then a user might have another album where the composer's Tchaikovsky, but maybe it's in Cyrillic script, because he's Russian. So then they, they, they can end up with having the artist listed, tw or the composer in this case, listed twice with different names. But because SongCon is looking them up in a database and understands them as entities, we can say, always use Tchaikovsky, spelt in the Roman language, or always use a Cyrillic name, so we can get that consistency we provide sort names so we can always make sure we ignore the at the start in for for the band names or we sort by surname and that applies over over language over different languages and um, can be consistent throughout the database um, minimum, minimum server's got a concept of groups which is like works allowing you to as Alan said to browse by a particular group and Song Kong can add that data, understands works, so it allows you to um, 
browse as you wish. And it also can it also has an algorithm to identify non-classical from classical, so it can apply rules, especially for classical music. Song Kong has plenty of options, but it also comes with pre-configured <coughs> profiles. So that makes it very simple for the customer. They can just pick the profile that does the task that they wish to do without having to worry about changing particular options. But the options are available if they wish to. So the basic way it works, three simple steps to add your metadata. This is running the web browser interface. So here we've selected our profile, fixed songs for minimum server. We've selected our music folder. Um, there's an example of some of the metadata options you can change, but we've already selected a preset from our profile. We just press start to go. It goes away, identifies your music, and then creates a detailed report showing exactly what's been changed. And the great thing is there's no use of interaction required during the matching process. So if you have a big collection of music, you could just set this off before you go to bed, get up in the morning, and it should all be completed. And then you can review it or just, just trust it. And there's, there's nothing else to do. Um, you could also run run the profiles from the from the Malco itself from the front from the front panel. So you don't even have to using I, use an iPad or anything to get that music corrected. Although obviously you would need an iPad or something to actually look at the reports if you wanted to go into more detail. Yep. Um, this includes artwork, so not not just cover art. We also add artist images, which makes a much nicer experience on your control point. Is then you can, when you look at your artists, which can include composers and conductors, not just the main artist, that you can actually see, you know, you actually see a visual, nice visual indication of what they, what they look like. Um, and we have various options to save to the file system because some tools don't understand um, artworks in the files themselves. Uh, there's just a couple of examples using Kinski. So on the left you've got artist images and on the right you've got album images. Um, another thing we can do is a status report. This is quite a nice little tool that um, can just scan your existing library and tell you, give you an indication of how much metadata you have in your library. Nice little bar chart making this nice and clear the percentage of your metadata, and you can also create a spreadsheet. And create a spreadsheet showing exactly what data is in your files and what has been, what's been changed. You notice there we've got seven tabs along the bottom, each tab's got about 15 fields, so in theory. You've got about 100 fields of metadata that you can add, but you don't have to add. Metadata is available for what you would like to do. Um, and we also provide manual editing for those, for you know, it's not for those songs that Song Kong can't identify. It's not probably going to get 100%, get high figures, but you can also manually edit. And because we provide a web interface, it means you can manually edit directly on the mail code. There's none of this business of copying files to your computer, making changes, copying them back. It can all be done directly. <coughs> uh, oh, and now I'll pass you over to Simon. Uh, um, uh, please excuse my voice. Um, uh, and good afternoon. Uh, who here is familiar with Minim Server? Okay. So some of you will, will know some of what I'm talking about. Uh, the, you've seen, the, seen this picture earlier. Um, uh, Alan briefly described it, so just to remind you, the yeah. minimum server, uh, the box in the middle, reads metadata from the music files, met metadata put there by Hong Kong or uh, perhaps you have your own preferred metadata system, that's fine as well. And it indexes um, that music and serves it uh, to the control point yep. for browsing and also to the player 
people playing the audio. And separately from that, you can control the operation of Minim Server either from the front panel of the Melco or from a uh, web user interface. Thanks. So, um, Minim Server originally was designed for the needs of classical music. Uh, Alan has described the problems, and when I first did, started getting into uh, digital audio with my uh, classical library, uh, I experienced those problems um, and I decided I would like to try to solve them. So, the, 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 we've already talked about the, the need for rich uh, metadata going beyond the, the MP3 style of uh, doing things. Uh, works with multiple movements. I don't want to normally um, just look at uh, one movement of a symphony or a concerto. I want to browse and play the whole thing. Uh, very occasionally I might do it the other way, but I don't want to see four tracks for a symphony. I just want to see the symphony. And multi-disc albums are quite commonly in classical music. There's too much music just to physically fit on 70 minutes or so of one CD. So you have a double album, not because there's any particular um, meaning to what goes on disc one and disc two, just because there's more music. Uh, and I don't want to see that as two discs. I just want, if I, if I want to see the albums, not everybody wants to see albums. Some people do, some people don't. But if you do want to see albums, then you just want to see that as a single album. Uh, the other thing that is a very uh, key and I think unique feature of Minim Server is intelligent browsing. And that uh, has two aspects. First of all, you can browse by any tags and in any order. So the any tags is important because uh, you may, um, depending on the contents of your library, uh, you may have uh, uh, tags that are uh, not um, perhaps part of the um, ju just a small set that all servers uh, would support out of the box. You may have um, more richer metadata uh, such as created by Songkong. You may have added custom tags uh, for your own personal use uh, in, in, in some fashion. Some people, uh, family members with different libraries, they they put the name of the family member who likes that particular music and that you can select by the family member and just get the music that that, uh, that person enjoys to listen to. So tags can be used for any purpose at all and you can browse them in any order. I've got a, a slide coming up showing that. And when you do browse, the results of browsing are tailored for the contents of what you have just selected. I've also got a slide uh, coming up for that. And it turns out that although this was intended for classical, it actually works very well uh, for rock, pop, and jazz. Uh, next slide, please. So the, uh, the top line shows the steps that you would uh, normally go through um, in, you know, in the, the uh, conventional uh, scheme of things. Uh, start with an artist. Um, there's an example here. Um, and then you would see a list of albums by that artist. Uh, you would pick one, and that they would then show you a list of tracks within the album. You would pick one, or perhaps more than one, and then you you press play. That is very much like picking a CD off the shelf. You know where it is. You pick the CD. Uh, they, they probably ordered by artist name or something like that, and then um, you know you uh, uh, you find the music within that album that you want to play. Intelligent browsing gives you a completely, it gives you that option, but it also gives you another option as well. So perhaps I, I want to start by uh, a particular composer. So I've chosen uh, the composer I, I'm interested in. I want to see the works by that composer. And I, I'll see a list of works and then I'll choose one of them. And now uh, there may be more than one performance in my library maybe two, maybe ten. Um, and I want to see all of those performances by different orchestras, choirs, conductors. So there is a choice there. And eventually, by going through this chain, uh, I will come to uh, the music I want to play. If I wanted to go the other way around and start with the choir before I chose the other things, that's fine as well. That's what I mean by browsing the tags in any order. 
I did, sorry, uh, can we just, um, uh, and that, that um, approach gives you the ability to explore your library. You can find other things, things I'm interested in, something by Allegri, I think I want this, but in the process of looking for it, you find other, well, I haven't listened to that one for a few months, maybe I'd like to listen to that one as well. So it's a very different experience from just the I know what I want and going straight to it. Thank you. So this is just uh, slides illustrating uh, uh, what, what I've been um, saying on the, the previous slide. It just shows you what it actually looks like as you select that composer, the list of works, the list of items, uh, alternative performance, uh, performances, uh, those two items, and then finally, uh, I, I want this particular uh, performance by the Talis Uh And the, the other uh, feature of, min of uh, intelligent browsing, um, depending on what I select, uh, these, these are three different composers, I can get a very different set of results, and MinInserver will tailor the presentation of those results according to what I have just selected. So in the first case, uh, I've got five items in part of two albums, and there's quite a wide choice, uh, I see, of different uh, artists, conductors, ensembles, uh, and Minim Server will show me all those available choices. Uh, quite often there would be a date choice in there uh, as well, the date that the, uh, the album was produced. It's not there because the two albums both happen to have the date 2003 and it wouldn't be useful to show you a date and you only have one choice 2003 and then you select it and you end up with exactly the same list as before. So Minimum Server only provides choices that are useful to you to, to progress uh, and identify what you're looking for. Something that's going to take you to a dead end is not shown. In the second example, uh, the uh, choice of composer has given me a single album, but there are still options within that album. So I can either select the complete album that's often played, or I can drill down further within that option, within that album by selecting the options underneath. Finally, uh, even more detailed, um, this particular composer doesn't even have any complete albums. Robert Parsons, he just has two tracks within one of my albums and I'm shown exactly those two tracks. There are no more choices. I can either play uh, one or both of those tracks. If I happen to be interested in the album that they came from, I can then select the uh, complete album at the top and see what else is part of the same album. It's all part of exploring my library and finding other things that perhaps I wasn't originally looking for. Thank you. Now, um, Minip Server started out life uh, quite simply. Uh, it just did what it did. And users liked it. And of course they said, we want this, we want that. So options were added, new configuration settings. And then it started to get a bit complicated. Then users started saying, well, this looks great, but I don't know, uh, uh, I'm not expert enough to understand what all these things mean. So now, uh, this, is, uh, this is brand new, we have the concept of profiles uh, where, where a, a number of different options can be combined together into a single profile and, and if you want that particular combination, you can just select the profile. Uh, if it's running on a Melco, just select it from the front panel, uh, Song Kong, Classical, whatever it happens to be, um, and you will get that combination of settings, very simple. Next. Uh, as we've already said, Minim Server and Song Kong work uh, very well together. Uh, it worked, Minim Server really doesn't mind what tags you've got in your library. It'll be good uh, for anything. It's particularly good if the tags are being produced by Song Kong. Uh, and we have pre-configured profiles uh, or, uh, uh, that are part of the standard download that you can do. Uh, if by any chance you have, um, perhaps you've just imported uh, some songs uh, from CD or download, or you've copied your library from somewhere else, it hasn't yet been through Song Kong, we have a generic profile uh, that is suitable for, for those cases. That is a very simple uh, set of choices 
uh, but it's, uh, you get, it's enough to get you started. And if you want to uh, customize things more, then um, there is an upgraded uh, version of Minimum Server available with more options and more configuration flexibility. Uh, a few more features. Uh, UPnP search by keyword. Sometimes you you know you know something's in there, but you really can't remember. You you think that it was an, a song with star in the name somewhere. So you could search for star, and you just get well, like, uh, a complete list of everything. Uh, containing that keyword. And that can be a useful, uh, that's complementary to the sort of browsing down your tree if you just want to search for a certain thing. And some control points actually allow you to mix that up and start by browsing and then switch over to searching. That's a powerful uh, combination. Uh, Linux sort of works with a very wide range of control points and players. Um, and when I get reports saying there's this little problem, then uh, uh, it tends to get fixed. Sometimes the problem is at the other end, and that's uh, that's more interesting challenge. But if it's the minimum, if the problem is at the minimum server end, it gets fixed. Uh, minimum server is very quick to respond. Uh, that was one of the important uh, uh, aspects of its design. So you push the button, and you, you get the results immediately. And uh, it runs on also many other devices. Some people keep co multiple copies of their library. Uh, of course you've got it running on a Melco, but maybe you've also got it running on a PC, Mac, uh, some other kind of NAS, uh, in which case you can run Minimum Server in more than one place and get the same, exactly the same browsing experience uh, from all of those different devices. I'll now hand back to Alan to complete the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. So, just to... Uh, restate the key points of Melco, there are really only two main reasons for Melco to exist. The first is exceptional sound quality. To, so far, um, until Melco was introduced, it was conventional to do digital music on computers or combinations of computer type devices. That limits the available sound quality. <coughs> Excuse me. So Melco was introduced first and foremost uh, to deal with the sound quality issue. It's not a computer, it's not a computer in a box. If you go around this exhibition, you'll see lots of things that have similar functionality to Melco. Um, I bet a pound to a penny that many of those, uh, most of those, um, are actually just simple computers in a box. Um, so this is a dedicated platform, no um, audio compromise at all, and it's got all the technical audio file engineering to achieve the results that you would expect. Um, but the other key point about Melco is, and some of this is due to its origins in Japan, um, where people are not computer savvy. They don't muck around with computers like we do over here. They just want stuff that works. So Melco was designed to be easy. It just works. The one area so far that was a problem was browsing. I'll be quite honest, because if you had a large collection, uh, and you wanted to do anything vaguely sophisticated in terms of finding music, it was a pain. Not really our fault, uh, it was the fault of the metadata and everything that we've inherited from the way digital music works. So we've tried to fix that, make that easy as well. So another word for easy in this context is intelligent. So if we use the word intelligent, borrow it from Simon from his intelligent browsing, we end up with Melco Intelligent Music Library. So a Melco Intelligent Music Library, in hardware terms, is exactly the same as the Melco that you already know and love. But it has got the integration of SongConk and Minim Server in this, with some very special stuff under the hood, together with the third very important um, integration element, which is the Melco hardware. So we've actually got machines here that we can play with later, where all of the key settings, so the profiles that Simon spoke about, so classical search, um, re-scanning, telling Song Kong to go away and find new uh, album covers, all available on the front panel of the Melco. Um, so, you know, I think we're justified in, in saying easy. Um, and, you know, that's quite an achievement. It's, uh, it has to be an industry first. Okay. So, very simply, Melco Intelligent Music Library is the combination and integration of SongConk, Minim Server with Intelligent Browsing, and the Melco hardware. 
And that, thank you for listening, is the essence of our story. So.